Greetings, everyone. It's uh, Saturday, February 6th. We're continuing to go through Search for a Nonviolent Future. And uh, we're up to the point where I tell the story of Karen Ridd. Uh, I've subsequently met Karen. She is a wonderful person, and this did happen pretty much as I described it, and I hope you will be uh, reading it in this opening chapter of Search for a Nonviolent Future. She was arrested in El Salvador with a friend, and make a long story short, she was freed because she's from Canada, and the Canadian embassy got her released. She walked out of these barracks where they were threatened with torture and every imaginable thing. And uh, But on the way out of the barracks, she saw her friend out of the corner of her eye, and she said later it was a very picture of dehumanization. Marcella was handcuffed to a chair, pushed facing into the wall, bandaged, set for, etc. And uh, somehow that touched Karen so deeply she didn't want to abandon her friend. So she goes back in, and again, long story short, after a while, the soldiers released her and Marcella. So it's on one level, again, it's a story how self-sacrifice in a noble cause, and the ability to master one's fear turns that fear into a creative force that overcomes the sacrifice. So that in a way, she operated against her instinct for self-preservation, quote unquote, and actually ended up preserving herself and her friend. And the way she did it was to touch on that element of humanization, of humanity, that was still resident in those soldiers, even though they were, it was not to where you'd notice it. So this is an important thing that nonviolent actors have to do. They have to find the res residual humanity in the opponent and awaken it through their own act of self-sacrifice. In her case, it's through this marvelous equation where she says to them, you know what it's like to lose a compañero. So they could make this equation in their mind us to our compañeros is Karen to her compañera. So the same feeling that they have for their compañero, they now transfer to Karen. They have empathy for the both of them through that human bond that they share with one another. And it awakens them and uh, they are released. So when I wrote Search, uh, I did not know yet about mirror neurons. So in an appropriate time, we'll be talking about that too. These are the neural pathways by which my action of overcoming self, pushing back against that impulse to save myself at any cost, uh, actually triggers a comparable response in the brain of anybody watching me. But let's hold that for another time and go on tomorrow to talk about our working definition of violence. And I hope that you are being intrigued, as Mahatma Gandhi said, to join the experiment. Thank you.